Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. Today I will give a lecture on the bio instrumentation and control. Design of the fermenter. The fermenter or bioreactor refers to a device that provides all the basic necessities important for biological product extraction. A fermenter contains different devices that help to maintain the environmental factor inside it which in turn leads to the production of biological products. Therefore, the main objective of a fermenter is to maintain a controlled environment that supports the growth of bacteria or other organisms. So there are several, several important factors that need to be accurate to design a fermenter which are as follows where the vessel should be well equipped to maintain aseptic conditions inside it for a number of days. Aeration and agitation are important for the production of biological metabolites. However, controlled agitation is required to prevent any damage to the cells. The important factors are listed as follow that need to be considered during the designing of a method. So temperature is an important environment factor required for microbiomes. Therefore, a temperature controller system is required. Optimum pH is also important for the growth of organisms. Therefore, the fermenter must equip with the pH controller. The fermentation of huge culture is a time-consuming process. It needs to be contamination-free until the process is complete. Apart from that, it is also important to monitor the growth rate of organism. Therefore, an accepted sampling system is needed to design a fermenter. The fermenter vessel should be designed properly to minimize the labor involved in cleaning, harvesting, and etc. It should be designed in such a way that it reduces evaporation. The vessel needs to be equipped with a smooth internal surface to support adequate mixing. So this is an example of the fermenter um, system where they are equipped with agitation system with the system monitor here which is connected to the controller the sensor scope here either it is a pH uh, sensor or maybe the temperature probes they also have thermal jacket to control the temperature of the fermenter the medium is feeding by controlling with the feeding pump into the fermenter the air is also um, enter to the using the spudger down here and and this is the submerged aerator so where is it will, will give an oxygen throughout this spudger and there is also effluent which controlled by the pump here which will be collected to another tank so this is the real pilot scale of fermented Construction material. As fermentation requires adequate aseptic conditions for better yield of biomass or product, it is important to select a material for a body of the fermenter which restricts the chances of contamination. Moreover, it needs to be non toxic and corrosion free. So, glass is a material that provides a small surface inside the vessel and also non toxic in nature. Apart from that, it is a corrosion proof and due transparency, it is easy to examine the inside of the vessel. There are mainly two types of glass fermenter which are a glass vessel with a flat bottom and a top plate with a diameter of 60 cm approximately. Sterilization of this type of vessel is performed by general autoclaving, borosilicate battery charge we use as large glass vessel. This is what you see in the uh, laboratory. The second glass vessel contains stylistic plates at the top and bottom of the glass vessel. It, in situ sterilization is possible for this type of glass vessel. However, it is more expensive than the glass top vessel due to the use of stylistic plates. The main disadvantage of glass vessel is that it is difficult to, to 
thought to design a pilot scale for metal with the glass. It is difficult to handle glass as a pilot scale for metal. Therefore, another non toxic corrosion proof material, stainless steel, was used for a pilot scale for metal. According to American Iron Steel Institute, steel contains more than 4% chromium is standard, standardized as stainless steel. However, the minimum amount of chromium required to protect the steel from corrosion depends on the corrodive agent present in the specific environment. In a pilot scale fermenter, normally the steel contains around 10 to 13% of chromium. In many cases, nickel is also mixed with in high concentration with the chromium to make the steel more corrosion resistant and it also provides engineering advantages. In this modern day, stainless steel fermenter are mostly used for industrial production. However, small scale production requires glass vessel. And this is an example of what we have in the lab, which is a glass fermenter where they are equipped with the several probes here connected to the pump, a series of pump here. This is the pump to control inlet and outlet of the medium into the vessel. And, and this is the controller. Okay. Here is the stainless steel fermenter, which is normally we use it at pilot scale. Right, temperature controller. During the fermentation process, heat can be produced in mainly two ways. Firstly, microbial biochemical reactions, and secondly, mechanical agitation. In the case of fermentation, temperature control helps to control the temperature at the optimal level by removing or providing the heat. In small-scale production vessel, the amount of produced heat is negligible. Therefore, extra heat is provided by hot bath or internal heat coil or heating jacket with the water circulation system or silicon heating jacket. The silicon heating jacket consists of silicon rubber mats with heating wires and it's wrapped around the fermenter. In the case of pilot scale fermenter, it is not possible to use silicon jackets due to the large size. In such cases, an internal heating coil is used for providing extra heat while cold water circulation helps to remove the excess heat. It is all need to be considered when you are designing the pressure controller for the fermenter or for the pilot scale fermenter. So this is an example. We have a water bath. We have a water bath here connected to the glass fermenter. And this is actually the another controller. So this water bath is used to control the temperature uh, inside the fermenter here. Another example of heat, heat transfer configuration for variables, which is this is the jacket that was it as what you see here. And this is we have the external coil where the water was circular around the vessel here. And this is in and out from the coil. Another one we have internal helical coil, which is they are uh, insert this helical coil in the fermenter. Another one we have internal buffer type coil here. And the last one, but not least, is external heat exchanger. They put the external heat exchangers controlling by the pump here in and out uh, to control the temperature of the vessel. Alright, the next uh, instrument for which is very important for the fermenter is agitator or we call it impeller. So the objective of the impeller used in fermenters are bulk fluid and gas mixing air dispersion, heat transfer, oxygen transfer, suspension of solid particles, maintain the uniform environment inside the vessel, and etc. So air bubbles often cause problems inside the fermenter. So impellers involved in breaking the air bubbles produced in liquid medium. There are mainly three types of agitators used in industrial scale bioreactors, which are just 
turbine. It consists of a disc with a series of rectangular vanes connected in vertical plane around the disc. And this is what you see, the disc turbine here. So they have a rectangular vanes connected, as you see in the side view here and from the top here. Vane disc. So this is a vane disc turbine. In, the, in this case, the rectangular vanes are attached vertically to underside of a disc. Another one is variable pitch open turbine. So this type of agitator like this and the veins are directly connected to center of shaft. If you can see here, there is no this here. They are connected directly to the center of shaft. Stirrer clans and bearings. The most important factor of designing a fermenter is to maintain aseptic conditions inside the vessel. It is highly challenging in the case of pilot scale fermenters. Therefore, stirrer shafts are required. This stirrer shaft play an important role to seal the openings of a bioreactor. As a result, it restricts the entry of air from the outside. There are several types of seal used for this purpose, which are the following. The stuffing box. The shafter is sealed by several layers of packing rings of asbestos or cotton yarn which is pressed against the shaft by gland follower. At high stirrer speeds, the packing wears quickly and excessive pressure may need to ensure the tightness of fit. The packing may be difficult to sterilize properly because of the unsatisfactory heat penetration and it is necessary to check and replace the packing rings regularly. And this is actually the stuffing box. So we have this is the impeller which we have connected in, uh, we have input in the vessel, and this is the stuffing box on top of the impeller here. So we have a packing ring, letter ring, gland follower, and this is the shelf connected to the impeller, and this is throat brush inside here, sealing liquid connection casing gland follower nut. So this is actually the real stuffing box okay, connected to the shaft. So just to ensure that it is fit to the fermenter. Another one is the mechanical seal. It is used in both scale and large scale fermenters. The seal is divided into two parts. First is the stationary bearing house and the second rotex on the shaft. These two parts are pressed together by the springs. Steam condensate is used to lubricate and cool the seams during operations and provide protection against the contamination. Another one is magnetic truss. So this type of seal have to counter the problem originated by the impeller shaft which is going through the top or bottom of the fermented plate. This magnetic drive is made up of two magnets. One is driving, one is driving, another one is one driver. Right? So as you look at here, this is driver magnet and this is driving magnet. Right? And if you look at here, is here is the magnetic drive assembly connected to the shaft. So the driving magnet held in bearings in housing on the outside of the head plate and connected to a drive shaft. The internal driver magnet is placed on one end of the impeller shaft and held in bearings in a suitable housing on the inner surface of the head plate. And this is the head plate, right, connected to shaft. When multiple ceramic magnets have being used is having possible to transmit power across a gap of 16 mm. Using this driven water can be stirred in buffer vessel up to 300 dm3 capacity at speeds of 300 to 2000 revolution per minute. Buffers. There are four buffers that are present inside an agitated vessel to prevent the vortex and in improved aeration conditions. Buffers are made up of metal strings, metal strips roughly one tenth of the vessel diameter and attached to the wall. 
the agitation effect is slightly increased with the wider buffers but drop sharply with narrower buffers. After installation of the buffer, there are a gap between them and the vessel wall which facilitates spore action around the buffers and minimize microbial growth on the buffers and the fermented wall. Buffers are often attached to cooling coils to increase the cooling capacity of the the aeration system sparger. A sparger is a device that introduces air into the liquid medium in a fermenter. There are three main types of fermenter used in industrial scale bioreactors such as pore sparger, orifice sparger, and nozzle sparger. So pore sparger is made up of sintered glass, ceramics, or metals, and are mostly used in laboratory scale bioreactors. As it introduces air inside a liquid medium, bubbles are formed. These bubbles are always 10 to 100 times larger than the pore size of the aerator. The air pressure is generally low in these devices, and a major disadvantage of using porous budget is that microbial growth may occur on the pores which hamper the air flow. Orifice budget, these are used in small fermenter where perforated pipes are used and attached below the impeller in the form of a ring. The, the air holes are mostly drilled under the surface of the tubes. Orifice barges were used to a limited extent in yeast manufacture, effluent treatment and production of single cell proteins. Nozzle barges, this is used in industrial fermenters, industrial scale fermenters. The main characteristics of this kind of sparger is that it contains a single open or partially closed pipe as an air outlet. The pipe needs to be posi positioned below the impeller. The design helps to overcome troubles related to sparger blockage. Another sensor is the pH controller. All types of fermenter are attached with pH control sensor which consists of a pH sensor and a port to maintain the pH inside the fermenter. pH alteration can lead to death of the organism which lead to product loss. Therefore, it is a crucial instrument for fermenter and needs to be checked regularly. And this is how they uh, detect the pH changes using the pH electrode. Uh, and also the pH meter. So this will give rate to the pH controller to control the pH values by using the IP converter. And it will regulate using the buff here. So it is either to add more uh, acid or alkali inside the fermenter or we need to reduce it. So this controller play an important role to maintain the pH values in the in the fermenter. And this is the summarize of several parameters that need to be controlled and maintained uh, during the process. So we have the parameter uh, of temperature, pressure, uh, agitator, shaft power, the foam, flow rate, flow rate, gas and liquid, liquid level, viscosity and turbidity. So the measuring device normally for temperature, we use the resistant thermometer or thermistor. So thermistor are used when, when small size and rapid response are required. So pressure, they are used normally diaphragm gauge. Pressure is regulated by a simple that pressure regulator in a gas exit line. Agitator shaft power using the voltmeter or string gauge. String gauge are used in bench or pilot scale environment form. They are used rubber sheeted electrode. And the mechanical form breakers are self regulating. So, sensor is used to activate solenoid valve to release anti foam agent. Flow rate gas, the rotameters or thermal mass flow meter. Position of rotameter flow is converted to an electrical signal. Controller manipulated flow valve. Flow rate in liquid for liquid form, magnetic induced flow meters or change in the weight of addition vessel determined by a load sign. So magnetic induced 
inductive meters are good for viscous fluids or fluids with high level of particulates. Controller can manipulate flow parts. The liquid level load cells to measure amount of liquid in vessel. Liquid high conductivity sensors. They might use capacitor probes such as uh, or ultrasound. Liquid height is a function of gas sparks rate and gas hold on hold up form can can be a complicated measure of this. Viscosity normally they use rotational viscometers. Online measurement is difficult. Pros with high solid content present special problems. Another one is stability to indicate the cell mass in the vessel. They use the photometer either as a probe into the reactor or in a slip stream. They have a many problem falling and interference from gas bubbles and suspended solids. Here is the approach to monitor and control of the chemical environment in the vessel. They are used the insertable probes such as the pH electrode, redox electrodes, iron sensitive electrodes oxygen probes, carbon dioxide probes, fluorescence probe, and also the biosensors. Normally, they use enzymes, antibodies, organized or immobilized whole cell for chemical reaction with physical chemical probes to measure result of change, for example, pH. Another one is acid gas analysis. So normally, they use paramagnetic analysis thermal conductivity or long pass infrared analysis, flame ionization detector which de de detect the low levels of organically bound carbon especially useful for volatile organics such as ethanol or methanol. Another one is mass spectrophotometer spectrometer sorry. Um, oxygen, carbon dioxide, volatile substance can also be used as liquid streams. The last approach is measurements from liquid slip stream. So the possible measuring devices and compounds monitored using the semiconductor gas sensors, HPLC, mass spectrometers, enzymatic methods. So here is an uh, example of overview of software of for fermentation. Okay, and normally this is related to electronic parts. Uh, just this is just only the general knowledge for you all, right? And also here the primary measurement shown on the top. Okay, where we have the power. We have the agitation, we have density, uh, dissolved oxygen, oxygen in and out, temperature, pressure, carbon dioxide exit, pH, carbohydrate consumption, and auto analyzer readings. So all of these will need to be controlled by using a specific electronic parts and they have a decision part as well where they have to scale up and then they have a controller here and this is they report the metabolic pathway and also what is the efficiency of fermentation. So all of these primary measurements use to calculate many related process and parameters. So uh, I think that's all and my many references for this uh, lecture is the principle of fermentation technology Second edition written by the editors of Stanbury, Whitaker and Hall and also the Bioprocess Engineering, the basic concept. Second edition written by Michael Schuller and Fikret Kage. So thank you. Thanks for listening. Please, please do not forget to subscribe and like my channel. Thank you so much. Bye.